In my childhood, I was fortunate enough to become a member of the Boy Scouts of Mexico. And as all the Scouts do, I made a promise. I promised to be helpful, to be useful. And of course, at that time, and right now, and along my life, I've always wanted to fulfill that promise. But at that time, I didn't know exactly how to do it. So, uh, uh, you know, as time passed by, I understood, I learned that I was quite good at solving complex problems by using tools, ideas, knowledge from different fields, putting them all together in order to build new knowledge and to build new uh, ways to solve problems. So my <clears throat> um, that's why I became an engineer, then I became a scientist. Later on, when I returned to Mexico, I became a professor. And I also work as a consultant for many companies, uh, particularly uh, small companies in Mexico devoted to software development. Um, what I want to do now is to share with you some of the thoughts that I have had uh, with respect to a question that my students keep on asking me, which is, is it enough to be good at mathematics in order to become a good computer scientist? Is it enough to be very good at programming languages in order to have a successful career in software development in the information technology industry? And the answer is no. My answer is no, it is not enough. Huh? It's good but it is not enough. You need to have many more skills in order to be successful. And of course, the next question is, uh, which skills? What exactly do I have to do in order to be successful? And clearly, there is no unique path towards being you know, successful at a, uh, in this field or any other field, but there are some thoughts that I have been producing over the last few years that I want to share with you um, with respect to that along those lines. So that's me. And the title of this pros and cons of trending in computer science and information technology because I, um, the answer, I, the question I want to answer here is whether trending is useful or not for uh, building a solid career in this field. As you know, scientists, we scientists like to have precise definitions, so I just wanted to have a clear definition of what trending is, a general direction in which something is developing or changing. And the question, as I said, is whether trending is useful or not for avoiding obsolescence. Because obsolescence, becoming obsolete, is terrifying for any person who's working on information technology, computer science, or any branch of industry. See? So, um, but you know, not becoming obsolete is a complex matter. It's not clear how to, how to, how to avoid being that. So, I want to know whether trending is useful or not for that. We may ask, okay, let's take a look at the history of science and technology and see whether you know, the trends that were defined um, uh, over the last 50, 70, 100 years uh, can tell us something about whether trending is useful or not. But unfortunately, the you know, uh, problem with, uh, with the story, with the timeline of computing, with the timeline of information technology, is that um, what we get is something quite similar to a scientific paper. We get a beautiful product which is fantastically written, it's very well polished, and it's, it is, of course, the outcome of very hard work. But that outcome doesn't tell us much, almost tell us nothing about the process that we had to go through in order to achieve that goal, okay? Um, for example, people who were working on, uh, on building mainframes, uh, those engineers at that time, back in the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, uh, could they, how could they actually manage you know, to see that the development of computer science and computer industry was going, was going to go from you know, huge machines like those ones, like mainframes, into smaller machines but way more powerful uh, in the 80s were called personal computers. Many people didn't realize it, and that's why their careers, you know, they were very successful in the short term, but in the long term, they were not. They were out of the game simply because they couldn't realize what were the uh, what we're going, to be, what we're going to be the trends in the, or the future trends in this field. The same for people in my age, my generation, who learn how to program computers using personal machines, you know, personal computers. Uh, many of us just couldn't even imagine that there were going to be smartphones that, were, that would be more powerful than the actual computers that we used when we were students. So how can we identify those future emerging behaviors, knowledge, trending that will allow us to build, as I said, the point is, a long-term career. It's the same with a paper. Uh, the frustration, all the back and forth, all the things that we have to do, all the step 
steps that we have to take back in order to achieve, uh, uh, in order to get some, uh, achieve some scientific goal, uh, cannot be seen in a paper. Right? You only get you know, the, the nice part of it, huh? like uh, when we are you know, girls and boyfriends, you see the best part of it, but then when you get married, well, you, get, you get to see the whole thing. You don't get to see the whole thing in a paper. So, one important question in order to answer the first one is uh, whether innovative, idea, innovative ideas are always welcome in the IT business, and the answer is no, it is not. Is training a good guide in information technology? Not necessarily. If, um, as any student or any graduate would do, uh, is capable of identifying you know, the very um, uh, current trends that are happening in software development, in hardware technology, then we are very much uh, well prepared in order to get a job in the very short term, in the immediate future, in the near future. But if one wants to have a job for new and unexpected paradigms in this field or any other field of industry, then it is not enough to know what people are doing right now. We need to have the means in order to glimpse at the future. And this is my answer. Information technology, I mean, the, 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 the reason for saying that trending is not necessarily you know, a, a useful element in order to build this kind of careers to have a long-term success, it's because information technology, computer science, and many other branches of the industry uh, run in two directions in parallel. One of them is to have business as usual. You know? That's typically the case when <clears throat> a company is um, using computers or networks or whatever it is as a tool in order to achieve business goals, okay? So uh, the way it works, you know, the way uh, technology is inserted into that, into that scenario is just as a tool, as an advanced tool, but a tool still, okay? On the other hand, disruptive ideas usually bring up uh, new paradigms, new ways to do business, but it takes time to incorporate those ideas into the mainstream. So if one is to build a very solid career, uh, along this path, then we must be able to identify these two walls and to work on them in parallel. To be good at doing business as usual and at the same time to be open to new ideas, to have all the um, habits that will allow us to acquire new information, to process it, and then to bring it into the market. Okay? And that kind of people, I call them influencers. Now, how to become an influencer? That's a big thing. Okay? It's like to say, well, I want to have, you know, I want to be very good at my job, but I don't know how to. Well, that's the point. How can I become a good influencer? Well, first of all, I need to learn three languages. The language of science, the language of engineering, and the language of business. In science, we care about the fundamental properties and structures of nature. That's what we want to know. That's the very purpose or the ultimate purpose of science. Engineering has a similar but it's still different purpose. The purpose of our, work, of our work as engineers is to be able to take scientific knowledge and products and put them into useful products or processes in order to find a market for selling them, okay? So we use science, we use the language of science, but uh, we cannot sell you know, and the abstract mathematical description of matter yeah, in the market. We need to translate it, we need to transform it into a product or a process. That's what we engineers do. And in business, well, what is the purpose of a business? It is to make money, okay? So if we are to build products and processes so that money can be made, we need to be able, as influencers, to build language bridges among those who do science, those who do engineering, and those who do business, okay? And by speaking these three languages, we shall be able to be, to influence each one of those spheres. Oh, sorry, don't forget. Okay. Now, the second uh, activity that I tell my students uh, that they need in order to become an influencer is to teach. Right? Teaching is, it is a both, it's a two ways uh, road. On the one hand, one has the pleasure, the privilege of sharing our knowledge, meaning of spreading our ideas, and at the same time, Young people always bring fresh ideas, bring new information, which otherwise would be quite difficult for us to get. When I'm lecturing my students, say, in discrete mathematics or the computer science, uh, I get to know so many you know, new things about software development, so many new applications, that I, honestly, I, I mean, I just, 
as all of you, I only have 24 hours a day, and I sleep four hours. Eh? So I don't have much time to invest in learning new things in a, in a very systematic method way. So by teaching, I get to know, to learn so many new things that actually help me to uh, become a better influencer. The third point is do consultancy, and if possible, own a company. Why? Because the key point here is keep it real. All the abstract information that we have as scientists and researchers, all the information that we have and all the things that we can do as engineers, we need, in the end, if we want to influence society, we need to put them in some way. Huh? We need to sell it to someone. I don't mean by that that it has to be you know, a financial exchange. What I mean by that is that we have to be able to identify a need in society or a number of needs that we can actually fulfill, that we can satisfy with our work, okay? And to do so, we need to keep it real, we need to talk to people, we need to talk to those who would be the customers of that idea, of those products. Read and do science, okay? Quite important, why? Because that way we become early adopters, we learn and understand new things way before others do. And finally, uh, get to know roadmaps of the particular fields that, uh, that we work on, why? because we shall be able to, con to contrast our ideas. We shall also be able to learn about things, as in teaching, that I just never thought they could be, huh? they could happen, I, I was not aware of them. Now, how do I walk with a walk? That's what I do. I mean, all the things that I've said, that's what I do every day. I do research, my, my field is quantum computation. Uh, we're now working on programming the quantum annealing computer that uh, is installed at NASA. I do a lot of consultancy, I love to teach, and, uh, and I have two startups. At the very end, well, this is the final reflection. That's how I'm gonna finish my talk. You say, okay, well, Salvador has, tell us, has told us sorry, about uh, his ideas on IT, computer science, how to become an influencer. But why is it that he does that? Is it just for the money? No. It's because in Mexico, we have to rebuild the fabric of our society. That's why. It is because we don't build walls, we build friends, we build bridges. We engage as members of the symphony of, nation, of the nations, okay? And that's why I work very hard on doing research and teaching my students, because we build friends. And we build the strategic alliances by means of hard work, common interest, and trust. Thank you very much.